The first ectopic pregnancy was diagnosed in 1693. Wow. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Surakshit Bhatina and in this video I'm going to explain to you a little bit about ectopic pregnancy, what might be its possible risk factors, how do we treat it medically as well as surgically, so stay tuned for that. Ectopic pregnancy is the implantation of the fertilized ovum outside the uterine cavity. So generally the pregnancy should happen inside the cavity but when it happens outside we call it as an ectopic pregnancy and we have around 10 to 15 percent maternal deaths because of this. So definitely early diagnosis is the key. An ultrasound scan maybe after four to five weeks of gestation you are able to know whether the patient is having an intrauterine gestation or an ectopic pregnancy. What are some of the factors which can improve the chances of ectopic pregnancy? The common factors are infections, therapeutic abortions, previous history of ectopic pregnancy, previous history of pelvic inflammatory disease, smoking, increased number of ART procedures which are taking place and also the medical treatment of previous ectopic pregnancy. The traditional diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy is made when there is no sac inside the uterine cavity but her beta HCG values are very very high. Beta HCG is a blood marker which will help us diagnose pregnancy amongst other things. The common sites where the ectopic gestation can get implanted are the fallopian tubes which is about around 95% of the time and the other 3% of the time it can be in the cornual area which is the junction between the tube and the uterus and the other 2% of the time it can be either in the ovaries or in the abdominal cavity. Thanks to the wide usage of ART procedures, we now have this new entity called as the heterotrophic pregnancy where we have one pregnancy inside the uterine cavity and one outside. Although heterotrophic pregnancies are very rare in natural pregnancies, it does occur from time to time. The clinical diagnosis of a heterotrophic pregnancy is always a challenge because you have two sacs, one is inside the uterine cavity where it's supposed to be and one is outside the uterine cavity. Her beta HCG levels are going to be high anyway, so it's very difficult for you to diagnose unless the radiographer is carefully looking at the fallopian tubes for an ectopic pregnancy. The chances of having an heterotrophic pregnancy is one in every 2000 600 pregnancies. The signs and symptoms of a patient having an ectopic gestational sac is very vague. Patient can have a dull aching pain in the abdomen. Sometimes this can also be in the groin area. Patients can have a little bit of spotting, a little bit of bleeding. Patient can have GI symptoms. The patient can have syncope, dizziness, shoulder pain, breast tenderness amongst other issues. So what happens when the patient has a ruptured ectopic pregnancy? The BP goes down, her pulse rate goes up and also her hemoglobin goes down. So how do we treat an ectopic pregnancy? Ectopic pregnancy can be treated either medically or surgically but some kind of treatment has to be done. Ectopic pregnancy by itself is an emergency and it has to be treated like an emergency. So if you know that you have an ectopic pregnancy, make sure that you are visiting the hospital immediately because if treatment is not done, it can also lead to death. Coming to the medical management of ectopic pregnancy, we use methotrexate along with folinic acid and this will be given in a combination either for a single day or a multi-day. This only depends on a lot of factors and the whole idea about giving this man management is that we want to reduce the beta HCG levels which I have already spoken to you about earlier. We want to bring it down slowly day by day until the beta HCG level becomes nil. The success rate of having a successful medical management is about 88%. Coming to the surgical management, we take a few factors before we go ahead and plan the surgery for the patient. We first consider the age of the patient. If she is very young, we would try to save the tube as much as possible. If the lady has already completed her family life, then we would go ahead and do a salpingectomy where basically we remove the full fallopian tube. The other factors what we would like to consider is one, the status of the tube with the ectopic pregnancy. Has it ruptured or is it unruptured? Is it salvageable or not? So we have two surgical options. We either go for salpingectomy, which is the complete removal of the fallopian tube, or salpingostomy, which is trying to conserve the fallopian tube. Both of them have their advantages and disadvantages, which we will be discussing soon. So if you like the video so far, go ahead and leave a thumbs up, leave a like on this video. This will definitely boost our ratings and at the same time, it will help us create more content like this in the future. Let's come to the advantages of salpingectomy. When we completely remove a fallopian tube, there is no way for 
a persistent ectopic pregnancy to remain in the fallopian tube and there are also no chances of formation of an ectopic pregnancy on the same side whereas when you do a salpingostomy well there is a chance for you to have a persistent ectopic pregnancy and at the same time you have an opportunity to have another ectopic pregnancy on the same tube again and no matter what surgical decision you make either it's a salpingectomy or a salpingostomy pregnancy rates drop to 40% for these couples so definitely they have to consider going in for an ART treatment going down the line if you would like to have a look at one of our ectopic pregnancy surgical procedures go ahead and Click the card which pops out here and this will take you straight to that video. That's it for our video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you got some useful information out of this. If you did, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Leave a like on this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that right now. And uh, do spread the word. Okay, this really means a lot to us. Thank you for watching again. And until the next one, guys. See you and have a great day.